This video is sponsored by Fabulous, the number one self-care app to help you build better habits and achieve your goals. I'll tell you a bit more about them later, but you can start building your ideal daily routine by clicking the link in the description. And the first 100 people to follow the link get 25% off a premium subscription. Three, two, one. That was great. Well, hey. You all, I only heard one clap, which either means... <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Dumb, still counting. No backwards. comment. Uh, two. <laughs> yeah. For the record, uh, I didn't clap. I just started recording on the clap. So that hopefully makes it easier. <laughs> Welcome back to the 2021 F1 Predictions Challenge. The season is finally over. Though judging from social media, it may not be truly over in the hearts and minds of many. But that. <laughs> That's not what we're, here, what we're here to discuss. Before the season uh, kicked off, I brought in some experts, people who know their F1, encyclopedic minds who are never, ever wrong to predict how the year will unfold in a competition of prognostication. They are John T, the player who's known to take risks and go for glory. Hi, John T. Did you enjoy Hello. this very, very long F1 season? Uh, I didn't quite enjoy the length of it. It felt like it went on forever, but there was a hell of a lot of drama, and we all love the drama. We've also got Sean from the F1 Word. Uh, how much do you remember what you predicted nine months ago, Sean? I have no idea. I, I literally have no idea, and I don't think if anybody sat there listening to this going, I predicted every bit of this season, you're lying. What a year. What a year. Unbelievable. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. This... Uh... I think we all went in thinking it was going to be quite predictable because nothing really changed from last year. And, and yet, and yet here, here we are. Um, and finally, Dan from Racing Reviews. Yo. Would you say this season has been predictable? Definitely not, which is great. I was very much on the conservative side of things. I don't really remember too many of my predictions, but I thought it was going to be a stinker in our last year of these regulations. No one was expecting a season like this. Disappointing we didn't get that Grosjean running in Paul Ricard, but apart from that, mega year. <laughs> yeah. And let's not forget these three human players will be trying to beat the Chamber audience who decided their predictions on aggregate. Uh, they beat the humans in 2019, but they couldn't beat Sean in 2020. Nonetheless, they will remain formidable. So should we just get straight to it? I think so. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Good luck, everybody. Okay, we start with the driver of the day champion. I wanted you to predict which driver would accumulate the most driver of the day titles across the season. Driver of the day is decided at the end of each race by public vote, so isn't necessarily the winning driver or even the best driver in some cases. So predicting this means getting into the public psyche. Uh, if you don't get the exact right answer right, that's okay. There's 25 points for getting it right, but F1 style points for being the, the second best, the third best, and so on. John T, you went with Verstappen. Um, it seemed quite obvious. He's been very popular the last few years. Yeah. Uh, Sean, you also went with Max. Dan, Mr. Conservative, <laughs> uh, you swung left a bit with Alonso. Okay. Having seen him in action now, are you feeling more or less confident about this? Um, you know what? Less confident, but I like this choice. Like, no one had a clue how or what Fernando was going to do this season. If he was going to come back and be this beast that we saw in those Renault days, back with the yeah. team he won his world championships with, or if he was going to have a quiet season. And I think as the season built... He definitely got a lot more spicy, a lot more fierce, and we really did start to see that Fernando of old. Don't think I've got many points here, but I like what I was thinking. No, I agree with what you're saying, and I definitely think if second half of the season, Fernando had been there in the first half as well. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to give too much away yet, but uh, now the audience, they also went with Verstappen, so Dan, you could either be behind or ahead of everybody straight away. Uh so I'm going to list the top 10 highest drivers of the day as ranked by their polling in each race. Um, the winner with four driver of the day titles and four second places in driver of the day was Perez. 
Really? That Perez got that four. Coming. Max Verstappen got three, but he did get seven second places. Uh, Fernando Alonso comes sixth with two Driver of the Day awards. Dan, do you know where these were? I will guess Qatar. And was it also Hungary as well? Because I can see Ocon didn't get any. So that's what I will go for. That's absolutely right. Oh, Qatar lovely. and Hungary. I should think so too. <laughs> so that's 18 points each to John T. Sean in the audience, with Dan getting eighth for a sixth place Alonso. But Dan, there's still plenty left to play for. That's okay. Do I get a couple bonus points for getting those two right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next question was, which team came fourth overall in the Constructors' Championship? Now, you may already remember this in your minds, but again, you'll get 25 points. We're going to get bang on with 18 for one out and 15 for two out and so on. So let's see what you put. John T, you went with Ferrari. They did. They struggled in 2020, finishing six. So you foresaw a comeback, I'm seeing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, they couldn't possibly do any worse. But I did think that McLaren might edge them. And even now, I can't remember which way it went. <laughs> Well, <laughs> you'll be surprised later on then. Uh, Sean, you also went with Ferrari. Dan went with McLaren. And the audience went with Ferrari as well. Uh, Dan, you're the one out again. Uh, you went with McLaren. I went and checked your reasoning on this. And you put McLaren fourth because you thought they were going to come third. You didn't need to tell people that. <laughs> no, 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 you, you had good reason. You could have kept that quiet. You thought, McLaren, <laughs> you thought McLaren were going to come third, but fourth to eighth was so mixed up that it was safer to go with someone who was close to fourth than try and guess who was going to come fourth. Yeah, and I think at the time, I think everyone here was pretty confident in Ferrari. I wasn't sold. I like the fact they bought in science. I think They've proved this year and even last year that Sainz and Leclerc, what a pairing that is together. Bringing those two as a teammates, that's going to be awesome. And so they were. But that car was shocking last season. I think people forget just how bad things were. And I wasn't particularly sold that they'd be fighting for third. I thought it would be more likely to be Alpine or Aston, as we'll probably find out later on. So, yeah, I thought I'm happy McLaren will be third or fourth. Most likely third. Got it slightly wrong, but looks like it's come okay this time round. Yeah, you didn't believe in Ferrari, but they outsold everyone's expectations and came third with McLaren coming fourth. So, Dan, you do get the full 25 points for that. Nice. And everyone else? No. 18 for being one away. And that, it doesn't even things up completely, but now you're back in the mix again, again, Dan. Our next question. Which driver would finish sixth overall? This is probably more difficult to remember straight off the bat. Uh, this would depend somewhat on how the constructors would fare. Um, but it actually was quite mixed up from third to ninth throughout the whole of the year. Um, it didn't really settle until the very last race. So, John T, you went with Alonso in what was the first of actually quite a few pro-Alpine manoeuvres you made this year. Yeah, I think I might have put a little bit too much stock in Alonso's return and what Alpine were offering. Does that mean, hang on, does that mean that I listened to Cyril? Oh dear. Oh dear. Never listened to Cyril. And if you've seen that, <laughs> if you've seen that tweet, that's, I think, went around today of uh, highlights from Kevin Magnuson's autobiography, never listen to Cyril. No, but do listen to Matt Bishop. Sean, you went with Leclerc. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, last race. Oh, it was very you, tight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, moving quickly on. Uh, Dan has gone with Ricardo, um, which essentially plonking at exactly where Sites was last year. So sticking with that seat for sixth place. And the audience has gone with Norris. So fully split between you. I'm guessing, Sean, you remember who did come sixth? It was Norris, wasn't it? It was Sites Lando fifth. Norris. Sainz came fifth, Leclerc <laughs> came seventh. Norris slotted right between them. Um, for a long while, Norris was actually third quite comfortably until the McLaren sort of development cycle faltered. Um, so this table could look very different. Uh, but John T, Alonso was 10th, 29 points behind the next driver, 
Gasly, there yeah. wasn't really a twist of fate that could have got him any closer this year, was there? No, probably not. You know, like I said, I just had a little bit too much faith in what Alpine was supposed to be bringing to the table, especially after testing, because I just got vibes from that big airbox. Oh, God, yeah, I forgot how chunky that was compared to them, because you don't really see that much of that outside of testing. But maybe next year. Maybe next next year's going to be can, tough, isn't it? Can we say before we move on, though, because everyone's banging on about Lando Norris, rightly so, and what a season he's had. Carlos Sainz, P5. Honestly, did anyone think that was going to happen this year? I mean, what a performance from Carlos. Seriously. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be getting the love that Norris is getting, for example, which I sort of get, but, I mean, Sainz has just been oh, possibly driver of the season. There's one for you. <laughs> Sainz Sci- yeah. has um, shown what a, what a few people have thought about him, the, the real class that he's got. And lots of people have just ignored it because he's bounced around between teams for quite a few years. And lots even this year, he was more quietly consistent, wasn't he? There wasn't yeah. a lot of sort of show-stopping, attention-grabbing races. Well, I, I know there's the, the, <laughs> the meme that, yeah, the camera it's... never sees him anyway, but you're right. He did, he did beat Norris in the end and, and just got on with it. And Charles, yeah, I think a lot of people didn't think that. I guess we'll find out later what you guys thought of that inter-team rivalry. That means the audience get the full 25 points. Sean gets 18. Dan, you get 15. And this time, John T, you only get the 10 points. Which means the audience have now taken the lead. And Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean, you're the leading human with 54 points. Oh, do you think just come? Are you referring to the uh, audience again as not being human, Stuart? Yeah, I, I know are. one commenter that will be very cross <laughs> with you. I shall apologise on your behalf. <laughs> to be fair, those comments were gold last time. <laughs> they know who they are. Uh, let's move on to the next question, which was a new question back of the grid in which I asked you to name every driver that gets knocked out in Q1 at least once. You get oh, five points. Uh, this is where I went driver. crazy. Well, maybe a good point, maybe a good reason. You get five points every driver you guess correctly. You'll lose three points every driver you miss. And you'll also lose three points for every driver you guessed incorrectly. So if you pick a driver who didn't get knocked out, that will cost you. So let's start by looking at who did get knocked out of Q1. It's Verstappen, Perez... Ricardo, Stroll, Vettel, Ocon, Alonso, Sonoda, Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, Schumacher, Mazepin, Russell, and Latifi. Jonty, you got 10 drivers correct. Oof. And that's 50 points. But you missed four drivers, and you also incorrectly guessed Norris and Gasly, which actually looking back at the season, two quite surprising drivers. So that's minus 18 points, meaning you gained 32 points overall. I'll take that. Are you surprised you picked Norris and Gasly now? Uh, I am now, especially after Gasly's qualifying year. Well, quite, yeah. Sean, you got nine of them right. So that's 45 in your favour, but you missed five. And you also went with Norris and Gasly. <laughs> So wow, you lose... the anti Norris and Gasly agenda on this show, <laughs> <laughs> right? I can't, I can't remember what your reasonings were, but it looks absurd. <laughs> now, uh, you lose twenty one points, so that's a net gain of twenty four points, bringing you level with Jonty. Dan, next. Oh dear. Now your conservatism may have hurt you here because you only got <laughs> eight out of fourteen drivers which is 40 points. Um, you missed out on six, but you didn't actually guess anyone else. So that's just 18 points knocked off for a total of 22. So you're up to 70 points. The audience, they guessed 10, like Jonty. But they did miss out the two Red Bull drivers, Ricardo and Alonso. And they also went for Gasly. So clearly... Despite Gasly actually having quite a good season last year, no one really rated him for qualifying. The audience lose 15 points, so that's a gain of 35 points, keeping them in the lead. 
it's, Dan, actually, like you picking quite a few, relatively few people actually means you were kind of optimistic, I guess. Well, I, I suppose it depends from what, what lens we're looking at. I just thought that Haas, that Williams and that Alfa Romeo were going to be terrible, in all honesty. I thought they were going to be so far off everyone else. I wasn't expecting, I don't think anyone was expecting Alfa Tauri to be as good as they actually were. So I put Yuki down there. I don't think I did pick Gasly. So at least I backed Pierre on that one. Um, but I, I just thought, again, those three back market teams would really struggle this season. And apart from Haas, Williams and Alpha, a lot, lot closer. Both of them getting through to Q3 multiple times. I did not see that coming. Uh, so it's still pretty close, but the audience is starting to pull away. So you guys need to start getting it together let's be honest up next we have the the question where i asked you which driver from each team would score the most points uh let's bring you all up to the screen with your points um and let's start at the bottom with the Haas boys now only sean went for nikita mazepin so I went back and looked at this. Now, Sean, you said in March that Mazepin will be the more likely driver to go for some harem scarum moves among the the tight battle that would surely exist between Haas, Williams, and Alfa Romeo. Was so I actually, wrong? <laughs> <laughs> if anyone was going to stick a nose in there, it was going to be the key, so wasn't it? <laughs> that was your point. So, do you think it was the actual the uh, the untightness of of the backfield that cost you here? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that Haas was just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, why bother? They could have stayed at home for a year, couldn't they, really? I mean, I think that's all it was. If they'd have been closer, I fancy maybe a point. But I think Schumacher's best finish was 12th. So even with a bit more chaos, he would have still nicked that point, wouldn't he? So I'd have lost. But nobody's won that one as far as I can tell. Uh, certainly not Haas. Uh, no. And I did have to check this uh, because I got it wrong when I started making this. <laughs> PowerPoint and had to change everything. I did say if anyone was equal on points, I'd do it on qualifying. So even though they got zero points, uh, Schumacher gets that one. Uh, so five points to everyone but Sean. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. Hope this Rude. doesn't come back to bite you. <laughs> oh, it will. Uh, next up, Kimmy and Gio. And we've got a split vote. John T and the audience have gone with Kimmy, whereas uh, Dan and the other human... Uh, Sean have gone with Gio. And Kimmy does win this. 10 points to three, which uh, gives Jonty and the audience five more points. Now, Jonty, Kimmy did win this. Uh, but would you have called this a good year for Raikkonen? Not really, no. He's just kind of been there. Popped up every now and then to do one of his crazy opening laps. And then <laughs> that was it. The, the surprise yeah. out of that team was, was Gio after the announcement of his seat going. The next sort of three or four races, he was lightning quick, especially in quality. It was, <laughs> what the hell? If you'd done that all year, you'd still have the seat, you idiot. Yeah, I don't know where <laughs> that came from. <laughs> Let's look at Latifi and Russell, in which everyone went for Russell. <laughs> oh, poor Latifi. <laughs> and yes, uh, George did score twice as many points as uh, Nicholas, which means everybody gets the five points. But um, Dan, I know Williams were one of the biggest winners out of that barely happened Belgian race, but were you surprised to see them so much more solidly in the midfield all season, apart from sort of the end? Definitely. I mean, I thought they'd be better than last year. I thought they would definitely be better than 2019. But scoring a podium... I don't remember the Belgian Grand Prix. I mean, was that a race? I don't think so. <laughs> but even putting it on second place, front row of the grid, that is just nuts in itself. In a car that is at best the seventh best on the grid, that deserves all the praise in the world. Hungary, yes, it was a slightly lucky race. But still, Latifi scoring those seven points he put on a stunning drive. George scoring points in that race too. Can't remember the third race that George got points this season, but his pace all year long, getting through to Q3, very much deserved that Mercedes seat. And Williams, a nice step forward for the team. George scored points four times. Uh, Britain, Belgium, 
Italy, Russia. There you go. Our next pairing is Gasly versus Yuki. Everyone went to Gasly. It wasn't really that much of a competition between them, was it? Gasly scored 110 <laughs> points. Yuki scored 32. So another five points all round. But Sean, would you say the point discrepancy here is more a point of consistency? Like, do you think Sonoda has the pace to keep up with Gasly if he could deliver it more often? I, I think Sonoda's got great raw pace, but I think Gasly has stepped it up. And I think he's showing that he might not be one of those that's on a level with your Hamiltons and your Verstappens, but I think he's he's got to be worth mentioning that mix with Sainz and Ricardo and co. Um, I think he's just been exceptional. The car's been good. The car was really good. I think the Alpha Tauri being so good was my big, one of my biggest surprises this year. Um, I think it's I think it's more a rookie season for Yuki trying to find his feet a little bit. He was scruffy at the start of the year, to put it mildly, a few crashes, but he seemed to get better as the year went on, and I think that's important for him. So I think we'll see more from Yuki next year. But in a head to head, I think that's Gazi all day long again next year. Yeah, I agree with that, and I think if he Next year's the crucial year, isn't it? To keep Marco from turfing him out on the street. Well, they're not to keep Perez forever, are they? Mm. Really? <laughs> they need somebody. Okay, next up. Leclerc versus Sites. And only Jonty went for Sites. And as we know, it was Carlos Sites who finished higher overall. Jonty, you praised him uh, a couple of questions ago. Um so you must have seen something in Carlos at the beginning of the season. Well, not just the beginning of this season. Like I said, he's been kind of shipped around from pillar to post between teams. Even doing, was it one or two years at Renault as a driver on loan, effectively? Yeah. And you're still performing relatively well. You know, to keep that standard, you, you can't ignore that. So when he gets into a capable car... He's really shown what he can do. And Leclerc should be worried. Yeah, I would be. I'm fascinated to see what happens next year if Ferrari are going to be as good as everyone seems to think they might be. I don't know where all, I don't know where all these rumours come from, but everyone seems to have an idea of which teams have the edge for next year, even though <laughs> no one's seen anything. Yeah, the, and no one has a clue. <laughs> <laughs> but what, but gets, I, what gives me... Ferrari are usually pretty good on which of their drivers they get behind. They usually call that right. What's going to happen if they're wrong? Well, what's going to happen if they're both kind of as close as they are now? Right, exactly. Mm. Oh, I quite fancy that one, though. But I, I will say, like, not <laughs> try not... I know that I've just lost in this round again, um, and I don't want to attack <laughs> him too much, but I will say that I think Charles Leclerc if you look at their stats, he had a better season, but on points, obviously, that's what matters and, and Sainz has come out on top, but I just wanted to mention that because it'll come up in your comments, Stuart. I think you'll find that Claire actually had a better year than Sainz did. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, thought I'd give it a mention. <laughs> yeah, because to be fair to him, there's only 5.5 points between them there. How many did the uh, questionable, at best, decision for Monaco cost him? probably 25 yeah exactly mm, that's yeah, a 10 yeah, point yeah. swing isn't it it's one of the dumbest decisions in formula one history i guess for, uh, ferrari are well known to learn from their mistakes so that's not gonna happen again. <laughs> 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 uh moving on to um alpine i don't know what order these are in i think i started putting them in this year's championship order but then i ended up putting them in last year's championship order. so it's a bit of a mixture um ocon versus alonso uh Everybody went for Alonso, and they were right, which five points to everyone again. But to be fair, it, it might not have ended up in Alonso's favour. Um, I mean, Dan, Fernando had a slow start getting up to speed, and Ocon got that race win. Do you think going into next year, now Alonso sort of found himself within the car and within the team again, he'll walk all over Ocon? Oh, that's that, <laughs> cheers for that one, mate. Um, I, if I'm really honest, I think it's going to be impossible to tell next year. I'm really hoping with this new regulation of cars that the whole grid is going to be mixed up. And I think you will get one or two drivers that just naturally suit the new cars better. 
But based on this year's form, I think Fernando, come the end of the season, has been the more consistent of the two. It's very close mm-hmm. in quality pace, in race pace. They're both so, so close to each other. And I feel Alpine this season, floating on the edge of that top 10, normally had one car on one strategy that got in the top 10, the other car on the opposite one, and work together more often than not, which was really nice to see. And Fernando working with teammates isn't something we see all that often, but it was really, really lovely to see him doing that this year. I think Ocon's win helps him slightly here, makes his points look a little bit better. But still, I think they're both a really solid pairing and I'd give Alonso the edge slightly. But then he's a two-time world champion, so that's probably to be expected. (laughs) Do you want to start? Oh, go on. Go on. Yeah. Spoiler for next week's video on my channel anyway. um, In qualifying, their averages, 10.95 for Ocon, 10.95 for Alonso. Uh, And in races, Ocon was 10.47 to Alonso's 9.15. It was so much closer between them two than I think many people realise. Really close. That's a great stat. Yeah. The one thing I really hope stays is the team feeling, the camaraderie that Alpine and both of these guys have seemed to have most of the year. There hasn't really been any flashpoints. They've all worked as a unit and it's been absolutely wonderful to see. I really hope that stays. Uh, let's have a look at uh, Vettel versus um, very low resolution Lance Stroll. Um, <laughs> again, everyone sided with the veteran champion and Vettel did score nine more points than Stroll. So, Points all round. Um, uh, J- John T, opinions on Stroll have been a bit wobbly over the years. Should he have expected better in that team? He did score points more often than Vettel, but then again, Vettel did miss out those 18 points from um, being disqualified in Hungary. So this could have been a lot, a lot more one-sided. I think it's quite difficult to call for both of these guys because that Aston Martin has been up and down all year it seems to be incredibly sensitive to setups for certain tracks like they'll be right up there challenging for 6th, 7th on the grid one race and then they'll be struggling to get out of Q1 the next race it's been really bizarre so it's like I say it's difficult to call it fairly for either of them but certainly I think Stroll should be happy with how fair it's been he would probably expect a little more for reasons. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that but that said, it's a four time world champ as his teammate, so I can't really disagree with you much there. And it's another one of those teams where you're not really sure what this is gonna mean for next year, because essentially they were driving around with last year's car with a hole cut out of the floor. Um, yeah. But and, I just want it to be pink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a little look at McLaren. Uh, Norris versus Ricardo. It, everybody went for Ricardo. Sorry, Lando. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they were wrong, uh, quite significantly wrong. Uh, so no points for anyone here. Um, Sean, I think Dan, other Dan, suffered, Dan, the driver Dan, suffered <laughs> from the clunky start <laughs> of, uh, I think, all of the drivers who moved teams. So do you think next year we'll see something a bit closer? I think the, the problem for Ricardo early in the season was that he was he was picking up good consistent points, but while he was delivering seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth places, Norris was third, fourth, and fifth. So it kind of I think that was his problem early on. But uh, I thought he'd jump in that car this year and just absolutely smash it. Mm. I think a lot of people did because it's what we would expect from Ricardo. Um, but he was quite a slow starter at Renault, wasn't he? And in his second season, he improved. So I think next year he'll definitely be able to take a step forward and it helps that there is the rules reset because Norris had a year in that car already effectively because uh, it was the B car this year obviously uh, and I think having that reset next year will be a lot closer between them but um, am I wrong in saying he improved towards the end of the year Ricardo as the year went on seemed to get better so this is that win in Monza I mean that's something to take away from the season isn't it a win oh yeah absolutely and I think he was finishing ahead of Norris more often or at least closer to him so I think he could be happy with where he got himself by the end of the year. Um, let's move on to Red Bull. Should be an easy one. Um, except John Johnson went rogue. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm. Uh, 
who's it going to be? <laughs> it, it was Verstappen. Uh, very much uh, Verstappen. Just so slightly. five points to everyone except Jonty. Uh, not too much to say except to sort of... I didn't go back and check. Do you remember what your reasoning were? Or similar to a science thing? Uh, yes, really. And I think certainly me and probably lots and lots of other people vastly underestimated how much Max brought to it brought to the fight this year. I mean we we all knew he's good. We knew we all know he's good. We all knew he was good. But he really did surprise a hell of a lot of people with just how quick he was right out of the gate. Yeah, I agree. He was a revelation this year and I you know, I think on balance, looking at all the stats and looking at all the drives, he drove mm. probably better than anyone out there, to be honest. I heard a, I heard a whimper, so I don't mm. want to push the controversy. Despite moments, because there were some, the, yeah. he's been a lot cleaner, generally, in his own driving, not just in combat with other drivers, his own driving. There hasn't been many scrappy mistakes and previously, there's been the odd ones that may cost him here and there. That hasn't been around this year. <laughs> and as you can see from his results, what was it? 17 podiums? I think it might have been 18. Well, sorry, every single race he finished was first or second. <laughs> Something crazy like that. Yeah. Uh, you can't, yeah, apart from you can't hungry, ignore that. Oh, yeah, hungry, limp round to ninth, but still in the but, points. But that doesn't really count. Yeah. Yeah, it was incredible consistency. Uh, unmatched in that regard um, and actually that's a very good point like within his own driving very very good and consistent his only moments came when he was sort of trying to fight with other people on track um, let's have a look quickly at Mercedes there isn't much to Ooh. say everybody went for Lewis hey. John T didn't do a lot of <laughs> a rogue Bottas uh, yeah Lewis outscored Bottas for the fifth time in a row I can't remember how many seasons they've done together now which means everyone gets a, a bonus five points. Um, so after all that, John T and the audience gain 40 points, Dan 35, Sean just 30. And Nikita Mazepin, indeed. <laughs> I hate that guy now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question is, uh, which drivers will get on the podium? So just like the Q1 question, I asked you to name every driver that scores a podium finish, five points for every correct guess, uh, lose three points for every incorrect guess or every one you missed. So as before, let's look at everyone who got onto the podium. So uh, Verstappen and Perez, Hamilton, Bottas, Sainz, Leclerc, Norris, Ricardo, Alonso, Ocon, and then Gasly, Vettel and Russell. What a season. Seriously. I know, right? <laughs> Did I pick everyone? <laughs> John T picked 11 out of the 13. Oh, what? Wow. <laughs> that is 55 points. You did miss out on Ocon and Russell, um, which probably fair enough in terms of where we were at the beginning of the season and probably where we are at the end of the season. Uh, so that loses you... Oh, no, you also predicted uh, Sonoda and Stroll. Because memes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that loses you 12 points, and that's a net 43 in the bag. To be fair, I probably would have predicted Stroll over Ocon as well. Even now, it kind of feels right, I think. Um, Sean, next. <laughs> you got nine drivers right. That's better than I thought. That's something. But you missed um, Sites. Science, Ocon, Gasly, and Russell. Uh, and you also predicted Stroll. Do you know, Hello. all the times I've talked about how much I love Carlos Science, I really didn't back him this year, did I? You did not. <laughs> wow. <laughs> not even for the podium. Not even one podium. <laughs> uh, that's minus 15, which gives you a net 30. Science. It's a funny moves you've made this season. <laughs> Looking back, I'm sure it all made a lot of sense at the beginning of the season. Uh, I'm not sure. 
Dan then. Old conservative Dan. Oh, no. Uh, you just got seven of these. Um, so, Ouch. yeah, you got the Red Bulls, the Mercedes, the McLarens, and Leclerc. So you also missed six, um, including Science again. Uh, but you again, you didn't add any wrong ones. You just went small, didn't push your luck. Uh, so that's a net 17 points. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> that is so bad. I think so we're battling bad. for last place, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew it wasn't going to be good. I mean, it, the win here is that we had a great season. You know, I'm not going to complain that we had more people on the podium. <laughs> really making the excuse. <laughs> Leave me alone, man. No one was going to get George Russell, all right? I can sleep well knowing that. The rest of them... I'll leave it there. In your in your defence, we did have a very jaunty-esque year, especially when we were kind of suspecting it would be a bit more the status quo because the cars weren't even allowed to do that much between seasons. So, you know, where we were blessed, you were cursed, as you say. <laughs> And just to get the audience, um, they got 10 of them right. So they score 50 points. Um, they missed Ocon, Gasly and Russell. And they also predicted Stroll. So they lose 12 points and gain 38 overall. I next asked you to tell me what the top six in the Drivers' Championship were after the first six rounds. The actual order after Azerbaijan was Verstappen, Hamilton, Perez, Norris, Leclerc, and Bottas. Surely very easy to get. Let's have a look at John T's predictions, who got Hamilton and Verstappen the wrong way around and a bit optimistic on um, Ricardo and... Not Ricardo, uh, Bottas and... No, a bit optimistic on Ricardo and Vettel. I think we're all a bit optimistic on Ricardo and Vettel. Um... So Hamilton, Verstappen, Perez, and Bottas are all one place out. But I don't think, looking at yours predictions, there is anything crazy about it <laughs> from where we were at the beginning of the season. Yeah, you even thought Bottas wasn't going to do that well. <laughs> it was logical. I kind of got, I got... I got the McLaren bit right, I suppose. <laughs> um, true, just not quite the right one. But that's a solid 12 points. Uh, Sean, uh, you also had uh, Hamilton and Verstappen, but you got Perez up in third. You were even more optimistic about uh, Bottas, uh, and you had Alonso in there as your sort of rogue extra. Was I drunk when we did these? Yes. Poss- quite possibly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that could be what it is. Then. <laughs> uh, not too bad, though. I mean, you were one out with uh, Hamilton and Verstappen, but you did get Perez bang on. Uh, but you did move Bottas a bit further away than even Jonty had put him. So actually, you also get 12 points, same as Jonty. I think overall, people thought Aston Martin was going to do a bit better and Alonso was going to do a bit better, especially after the six races. I think the first six races don't speak exactly to how things ended up. Dan. Oh, conservative Dan. <laughs> No, you actually put Verstappen in the lead. Oh! Uh, you got the top three in exactly the right place. Nice. Wow. I think you need Gun Max first. I didn't. I can't remember why. <laughs> Fanboy. <laughs> I read too much into <laughs> testing, probably. Rule number one that you should not do. Um, hey. That's a fluke. I'm happy to admit that. That's a complete fluke. <laughs> I'll take those points. Um, no one else put in Norris in the top six. I'm slightly surprised at, but I think that was just my overconfidence in McLaren. Um, but yeah, a, a, a good round for once, which is surprising. Yeah, that's a nice 17 points to you, which boosts you up to 139. Uh, the audience... Pretty similar to the general theme, but with... Um, Hamilton up top, Verstappen second. Missed out on some Bottas points because uh, he underperformed. Uh, but they did get Norris as well, so kind of similar to uh, to you, Dan. Uh, how many points was that? Just 10 points overall. So you all gained points 
over the audience this time. So humans are clawing it back. Um, next question. I asked you to pick three teams on the condition that every one of their DNFs would net you five points. Uh. John T went for Aston Martin, Alpine and Haas. Sean went for Alpine, Ferrari and Haas. Dan went for Aston Martin, Ferrari and Haas. And the <laughs> audience went with Aston, Ferrari and Haas. Uh, you, you all picked from quite a small selection. I, I've noticed yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, let's start with the most popular choice. Haas had eight DNFs this year. So that's a valuable <laughs> 40 points to everybody. So you should all be glad you didn't miss out on that one. Um, Aston Martin, seven retirements. Uh, pretty high. I, that's 35 points to everyone except Sean. Uh, though actually, I don't remember where we... Maybe this was after testing. I, I, I was surprised that you all thought they would be so unreliable. But now I can't remember how they were in testing. I obviously thought they were incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Uh, three of you have picked Ferrari. Uh, they had... One retirement. Ooh. Wow. Anyone remember where that was? Who that was? Um, it's Leclerc somewhere. Was it the last race? Monaco. Leclerc. Does that count? No, it was a DNS. That was a DNS. Oh, I did not get a point for that. Sorry. <laughs> I went by the official results where it said DNF. I was um, agree, Leclerc. It was Hungary, Leclerc, who got caught up oh, in that. Of course, Bottas bowling, yeah. <laughs> that's right, he suffered from that. So that's five points for Sean and Dan in the audience. Uh, John T, you dodged that bullet. And Alpine, just five retirements. So 25 to Sean and John T. So John T, you get 100 points in this round. Woo! Uh, Sean, you get 70. <laughs> Ferrari did Yay. cost you here. Dan, you get 80, so you're within one point of Sean now. Nice. Bring it. <laughs> uh, the audience also gets 80. Uh, anyone know who got the most DNFs? Red Mick. Bull. Oh, Williams. Teams has. Yeah, Williams, it was. Williams had the most. Oh. 11. And that question by... was worth 200 points. <laughs> <laughs> And none of it, but Haas was the second best with eight, so you could do all that. Aston and Alfa Tauri both had seven. Red Bull had six. Mercedes and Alpine had five. Alfa three, McLaren two. And Ferrari was the lowest possible scoring team with just the wow. one. After 2020, they, they, were, they, they brought the car home. And actually, I don't know how many DNFs Williams had in 2020, but that was their thing that year, wasn't it? They brought the car home if not in the points. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I can see why you maybe didn't pick them. Next question. Get Yuki's points. <laughs> all you had to do <laughs> was pick five races and get all of Yuki's many, many points from those races. So let's hope you chose wisely. Is this where people uh, pick Singapore and Japan? John T, you pick Monaco, Netherlands, Italy, Singapore and Japan. <laughs> 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 uh, Sean mate. you picked Bahrain hey. Imola Austria Russia and Japan what Dan point? you went Imola Monaco Singapore Japan and Brazil and the audience went Bahrain Imola Austria Italy and Japan so let's get the obvious out of the way first uh, we know the final calendar wasn't the calendar you got to choose from um, so there's no Japan and there was no Singapore either um I can't remember what, the, what the, the state of the world was back then. I, I feel like picking those was actually quite a risky move, knowing that there might have been some cancellations. But maybe you, were, maybe you were trying to balance how well he would do in those races versus the risk of them being cancelled. Right, John T? Well, no, I'd actually gone with those because, you know, particularly like, Singapore, Japan, and that area, despite being quite hard hit early, 
with COVID, they actually sort of dealt with it very strictly and managed it pretty well. Same as New Zealand and Australia. So I assumed they'd be fine. And we still had the Olympics. So what the hell? That is true. <laughs> what the hell? How many points did that cost you? We will never know. Um, let's sort of go in a kind of popularity order. Three of you picked Imola, in which he scored zero. Uh, two of you picked Bahrain, in which he scored two points. Uh, Austria, he scored zero. Uh, Monaco, uh, zero. Uh, Zanvort, I guess I did that right. Uh, Italy, nothing. Zanvort, nothing. Uh, Russia, did, didn't score any, any points wow. there. Um, Brazil, uh, he, he didn't score there either. So that's a grand total of two each to Sean and the audience. Uh, Are you doing that round again this, next year? <laughs> <laughs> Most dramatic race <laughs> Wow. Um, so that's uh, really changed the scores up. Um, I, I did check. Your your maximum possible score was 30. Uh, if you'd picked Abu Dhabi, Hungary, Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan, Bahrain, Bar- I can't pronounce. Abu Dhabi, Hungary, Azerbaijan, Bahrain, and the USA. If you'd have picked those five, you would have got uh, 30 points. Um, he finished in the points seven times, but you but you didn't. Now, next year, you can do huge points for you. <laughs> yes. Um, and after that incredible round, we're going to true or false. False. Uh, <laughs> w- w- wait, for, wait for it. Wait for it. Uh, and I will remind you, you have already answered. <laughs> uh, okay, it's very simple. I asked a bunch of true or false statements, and you had to pick a side. Uh, first statement. Williams beats Haas in the championship, which I could test was not that obvious 10 months ago. Nonetheless, you did all pick true. And it was true. So we all get five points. I'm still shocked you all put true. Because, really? Uh, well, I don't... I mean, Williams had just finished last two or three rounds on the trot. Yeah, but I mean, Gunther Steiner had said that they weren't even bothering with the car. They'd kind of written off the year, so I was kind of like, well, if they're not going to bother, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, not going to bother. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's true. Um, let's go on to an even more obvious question. Um, Bottas beats Verstappen in the championship. Uh, you, you did all put false for this one, and it was false. Uh, so five more points for everyone. Max did just squeak out Valtteri by the end there. Uh, let's quickly move on to the next one. Um, I asked if Silverstone would have fan attendance, which when I asked this, uh, mm. it was said at a time when putting people in grandstands was still a little bit, will they, won't they? Um, but but you, you did all say true um, <laughs> to, to cut the tension there. And it was true. There was very much a crowd at Silverstone. In fact, I was there on Friday myself, just to do research for this video. <laughs> <laughs> what, so you turned up just so that you could say, yes, it had fan attendance, even if you were the only one there standing outside the gate. One attendant. <laughs> Still counts. I was there. I saw it. Uh, so yeah, five more points to everyone. I, I assure you, you do start choosing different things uh, soon. Um, I did ask, Hamilton Ooh. will retire. Ooh. And at this point, it was more of a, oh, will he get the eighth and then get out of there kind of a question. Um, people are asking it for different reasons now. Uh, maybe don't need to get into that right now. Uh, but you did all say he would stick around. Uh, no one thought he would uh, um, do a Rosberg and complete his dream and get out. Um, as of this recording, he has not retired. I'm pretty sure he's going to be in that seat next year. Sean, you think so? That or stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, stuff. But then who will race in his seat in Formula E? Oh, I don't care about Formula E. Anybody can do that. <laughs> and That'll don't, have a go. Well, Grosjean, there you go. Don't forget Grosjean was going to do that test with Mercedes. So, you know, 
Just saying. That's a good point. I guess we'll find out by March <laughs> who's going to be in that seat. That would but... be a hell of a comeback, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Especially if he pummels George. <laughs> um, he'd do it easily. So no, no. <laughs> uh, we're recording this on the thirtieth. I think this is supposed to come out on the third. So if he retires in the next four days, doesn't count. Yeah, everyone will be r- ranting and raving at you in the comments for saying you made it happen. <laughs> it's kind of influenced my house. All right, next question. McLaren wins a race. And everyone except Dan <laughs> said Sam. they would. It did seem optimistic at the time, though. It really did. Uh, but they did indeed win a race. They almost won two races. And they were the only one two of the year. Who would have predicted that? I wouldn't even ask that as a question. <laughs> not Dan. Yeah, not me. <laughs> oh, that's disappointing. I mean... I, I was confident Mercedes and Red Bull would be the best two teams. I, I'm happy with that thinking at the time, but it's it's oh, it's not been a good year here, has it? I mean, to be fair, in the last few years, not many other teams have got a look in. <laughs> Let and McLaren. When did they last win a race? 2012, 2013. No, 2012. That was when. Hamilton was there. So, you know, nonetheless, you, you have missed out here. Uh, and you're falling, you're falling behind Sean. Button was the last race winner, wasn't he? I think he was. Uh, right. Brazil 2012. Brazil, right at the very yeah. end. Uh, there we go. Sorry, I, uh, I said Hamilton because I know Hamilton has won in every season that he's been in. So it no, I just, yeah, I just had to throw that out there so that we can pretend like we know what we're talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, no, you definitely know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Alonso, more complicated wording, will score more points in total than Ricardo did in that seat last year. Um, more mixed up. Well. Oh, I split the room. Just, yeah. So John T continuing in his pro-Alpine agenda said that Alonso in that seat will score more than the 119 points that Ricardo scored but he (sighs) only scored 81 points I mean the Alpine was a little lacking but Alonso did have five more races than Ricardo did last year so it seemed like on balance maybe he'd do it Um, tricky one that's uh, five more points to everyone but Jonty then I mean, John T, I think we know what happened here. It's it's just more of the Alpine not doing what you wanted it to do. Uh, Yeah. Next year. You watch. Next year. (laughs) And also Alonso took a while to get get going, I think, longer than we thought. Yeah, that's true. Um, Next up, will Red Bull and AlphaTauri maintain all four of their drivers in 2022 in the same seats? Um. Could have been contentious. They haven't seemed to have kept their drivers in the same seats during the during the season for a few years now. Um, only Dan went for false. And this isn't one of your crazier guesses, Dan. Like that, That's quite sensible. Um, but yes, all four of their drivers are exactly where they started. Um, and it's too late for them to change it now for this competition, even if they do kick out for Stappen and replace him with... Um, Hamilton. <laughs> Can you imagine? (laughs) Um, So yeah, that's five points for everyone. But Dan, again, sorry. Um, And with that, Sean and the audience have gobbled up the most points with 35 by getting every single question right. What's your secret, Sean? Uh, Well, that last question was fluke, because if you remember, I read it wrong last year. (laughs) (laughs) Or when we did this earlier in the year, so that was total fluke. Um, I just, I guess just knowing everything haven't you yeah, done that but... every year mm-hmm. uh, that's his thing yeah <laughs> there's always one i'm gonna make an intentionally complicated question next year just well they clearly don't need to be complicated <laughs> no that's true <laughs> that's what <laughs> day of the week you. it is and i'll be lost <laughs> uh right next we have our final round which i think will be probably the hardest 
Can I ask um, a question before we go into this final round? Yep. Um, are we playing by the same rules that we followed for the whole and the precedent that's been set for the whole competition? Or are they going to change now in this round and we get a, a different winner? <laughs> uh, I just want to make sure. Let's see how it's going by the penultimate question. You're brave if you leave that in the edit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, no, I mean, Stuart, this isn't right. <laughs> oh, it's called a motor race, Toto. <laughs> God. Oh, thank God they got rid of the dislike button. No, they didn't. They made it bigger. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Uh, this question is me asking my own audience how they feel about certain topics now that we've all seen the season. So at the beginning of the season, you had to guess how people would feel by the end of the season. Cheated. <laughs> But no, I, no, I wasn't asking for a general vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I did contain it. Um, uh, just to quickly recap this points situation. So I'm going to ask you, or I did ask you, what percentage of the audience would give a particular answer to a question? Uh, if you got it bang on, you'd get 25 points and you'd lose a point for every percentage point you were out. But if you're on the wrong side of the 50% line you get no points at all, no matter how close you are. It sounds complicated, but it isn't. So let's do it. These are the points as they stand. Uh, looking at you, John T. For now. I can remember this ending up quite all over the place for everyone. <laughs> let's ask our first question. I asked... Was sprint qualifying a success? And I'm asking how many people said yes to this question. Um, John T, you went for 28%. Sean, you went 47%. Dan, 18%. And the audience went with 45%. So you're all on the same side of the line. So you're either all going to get, well, you're quite spread out, but you, you might all get zero, you might not. And the audience polled at 42%. Wow. Ooh. Uh, which I think is higher than the, the official survey thing they did. 42% of the 10,000 people who answered this question um, thought it was a successful format. What's wrong with them? Just one point to Dan, because you were 24 points away. 11 points to John T. 20 to Sean for being five out. And 22 to the audience, who were the closest, with three out. But if I did a quick poll of, of you three, how many of you think it's a success? No. No. I've got a fence sitter. Sean thinks no as well. I'll just speed well, things think up. He no, does think but no. It, 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 it... <laughs> If, if you could, if you can put a car like a Mercedes or Red Bull out of position for every single one and do it on a track like Brazil where you can overtake, then yeah, but that's not going to happen. So no. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of saying it was a bit lackluster, wasn't it? Like reversing the grid. If you reverse grid for it, that'd be a brilliant idea. But I'm surprised no one's thought of that. To be honest, no, no one's mentioned that at all. Mm -mm. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty popular. Let's quickly move on to the next question um i asked were, were aston martin right to swap perez for vettel um i'm again asking um for how many people said yes uh jaunty thought just 12 percent would agree sean 16 dan you're a bit higher with 20 and uh the, the pre-audience went with 19%. Uh, so you all thought Aston Martin would end up uh, regretting swapping Perez for Vettel, essentially, is the vibe we're going for. Anyone want to have a guess at what the audience thinks now they've seen the races and been able to evaluate how that played out? 47%. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you. 51% agree that, <laughs> that it was the right uh, move. I did check. On, I was surprised by this. I checked on this um, in the community post under where I linked to this survey. Um, 
And a few people, they just thought Vettel probably brought more to Aston Martin development-wise with his experience than, than Perez would have. Um, probably thought he would have scored just as well anyway. And some people thought it was positive just because it got Perez in that Red Bull. <laughs> so yeah. from that point of view yeah 100% the right decision <laughs> well, yeah. um, I don't agree with the other though because they didn't really develop the car this year uh, yeah true um, I would have been well, on the the side of the line that you were if I was asked for sure that does mean though none of you get any points because you're all wrong um, even if it had been 47% I think you would have been, been, been zero points anyway so let's just pretend that didn't happen on to the next question. In which I asked uh, 22... Well, at the time I asked 23 races, but it took, we only had 22 races, so you give with what you get. 22 races, was it too many, just right, or too few? And I'm asking how many people said too many. John T went with 72%. Sean, 33. Dan, 27. And the audience, more in the middle of the two with... 45 so you are straddling that line um so someone is going to get zero at least uh, sean's going to get it bang on because everything was 33 during that last race it stats for everything it all seemed to line up i don't know how but it did how would how would you answer this question now uh dan <laughs> i was going to ask sean but i know sean's just been quietly weeping into his tired pillow <laughs> for the last three months <laughs> Um, if I was personally doing the question, I, I would go between too many just right. I'd probably put just right. And I'm hoping that about 50% is what I was thinking. People would say just right. And then splitting the other 25 between too many and too few. Because you're always going to get people that put too few. That's always going to happen on a questionnaire like this. But yeah, I, I, maybe a couple too many to be honest with you, especially having two races in Austria. We definitely didn't need that. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, the polled answer was 31% Ooh. said there were too many races. <laughs> so, yeah. I like that. John, John, you were pretty right. 30, yeah, Almost, but pretty much a third. Uh, yeah, in my yeah, comments, so, not my answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Your, your prediction was appalling. <laughs> uh, so, John, so you do get zero points. Uh, audience gets 11 points for this one. Dan gets 21, but Sean, 23 points. Very, oh, very close. Oh, oh. How it's many getting left? lively. Um, let's see. One. Two. Looks like two. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of effort to count to two. You're right, Stuart. Is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it from my from my from my script, which tells me what happens every time I click on the PowerPoint. <laughs> so there's like, you know, twenty twenty clicks between here and the end. I was just trying to work. Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, next question. I want people to fill in the blank. This year, I was really impressed, disappointed, or unsurprised by Ferrari's performance. I'm asking how many people were impressed. And Jonty thought 44% of people would be impressed. Sean thought 63. Ooh. Dan, only 13% thought Ferrari would be impressed. <laughs> uh, and the audience at the beginning of the season thought 37% would end up impressed with Ferrari. Now, Sean, um, you, you know, Ferrari have been pretty impressive this year now that we've seen them, but this is a three-way question, so it could split it up a bit more. So, you're the only one on the positive side of the line, so you're going to need 50% or more people to be impressed to not get zero here. It'll be 52. 52%. That's going to be my guess. Um, Dan, you can get off if you want, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I went rogue, at least. Well, I, I went rogue. I'm pretty sure my next one's very rogue as well, which I'm glad I did, considering the situation I'm in right now. But <laughs> we're talking about Ferrari here, and to say you're impressed with Ferrari, it should be world championships and wins, in theory. But in the context of their improvement from last year, I think I'm going to be very wrong yeah. on this one. <laughs> the answer was... 
percent. Oh, oh, John T. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> so, John T. Got it. Bang on. Um, fifty-two percent said uh, it was just unsurprised, pretty much as expected, and uh, only four percent were disappointed. So that's no points to Sean for being the wrong side of fifty percent. It's no points to Dan for being too far away. Maybe you can both get on. <laughs> no. Yeah. Do you want a lift, Dan? Yeah, we've got a lift. Pick you up, Mike. <laughs> Eighteen to the audience, but John oh. T gets the full twenty-five points. What? A, what a shot that is! Seriously, thirteen apart. I think I came into this with a lead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not, to be honest, I am. I am. I thought it would be above fifty. I am because I the improvement they made from last year and through the season was was phenomenal. But yeah, my audience <laughs> clearly never fails to surprise. I said uh, to you after the stream on Sunday, uh, the Abu Dhabi stream, Stuart. If ever there was a year John T was going to win this, it was twenty twenty one. So. Come on, John T, for God's sake. Let me get something <laughs> right tonight. Yeah, it depends what the next question is. I may have said something very stupid. Well, let's sign out. This is it. Final question. 2021 was a great season for oh, Formula dear. One. Oh, 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 when did you put the poll out? <laughs> uh, uh, it was like uh, a few days after the end of the season, I think. Oh, sh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just censor yourself? I did. <laughs> Showing off with my buttons. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, I'm glad you got that. <laughs> All right, let's see how we did. 68% from John T. 71% from Sean. Dan, do you remember what you put? I think it was high. 100%. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I remember. I remember why you did this as well. You were like, "I'm going. I'm, I'm not going into this season with a negative mindset. I'm going to believe." I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I went for that strategy. Uh, and the audience identical to John T. Sixty-eight. Oh come on, that's <laughs> Which boo. Is such a... <laughs> boo. And the answer was it might surprise you. Ninety-two percent. Just ninety-two. Uh, so... Look. Some people were in a bad mood. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Why? I know, I know you haven't looked at social media in six months. But, <laughs> uh, but Dan, you were the closest. So you were right to be gung-ho with positivity. And let me just mention this video sponsor, Fabulous. Fabulous makes it easy for you to develop better habits and routines that you can actually stick to. And look, we all know changing your habits and getting out of bad ruts can be hard. Even when there are all these good things we know we want to do with our time, the mental block to get yourself into a positive routine can be very real. As someone who struggles to get all my brain gears flowing smoothly, mental health-wise, I know I'd like to stop starting my day by doom-scrolling Twitter and actually do more reading, a bit more exercise, learn new things and stop being a rumbling bag of R's and oh no's. Fabulous is cool because it starts with small achievable goals like staying hydrated and keeping your space tidy. And from there you can build personalised journeys depending on what you want for yourself in life at your own pace. And you can do this in either a self-guided way of constructing your own routines or in a smart guided journey with coaching and programmes designed to help get you to your goals. So for me, I wanted to do a bit more exercise more regularly, find the energy to spend more time cooking more interesting enjoyable meals get myself in a more productive headspace and actually find the motivation to read and enjoy more books like I used to. And Fabulous helps you build these routines for yourself with best practices derived from well-researched studies to help you feel healthier and more fulfilled. You too can start building your daily routine with Fabulous. The first 100 people to click the link in the description below will get 25% off a premium subscription. Hurrah! Enjoy it. Which means... If you can't add up two minutes ago, uh, the final results. Uh, Dan, you did win last year. No, you did win two years ago. You, this time, I'm afraid you're in last place with 283 points. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry it wasn't your year this year. I think conservatism did not play off in a year where everything happened. <laughs> yeah, 
bad tactics this year. Did did not go my way, but you know, it was a great season. <laughs> I'm happy to say that and I can take a lot of joy in the fact that conservatism was the complete wrong way. So, yeah, it's it's disappointing, but I, I've won a title before. It's fine. Yeah, and just like another champion, Fernando Alonso, we're, we're glad you're still knocking about. <laughs> 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 Maybe not if one is. Uh, I, I, think ne- I think next year we should do this before winter testing just to keep it as mixed up and confusing as possible. Anyway. Yeah. In before launches even, so you can include the liveries oh, again. Oh, oh, oh. oh, yeah. I better get on it. Better think of some questions. Anyway, we've got a total to third place. Uh, it's F1 Word Zone. Sean, 304 points. Mm, not a bad showing. You couldn't quite hang on to the crown. Um, are you happy with this, or do you want to go to uh, the Court of Arbitration? Um, I have, I, just to let you know, I have submitted uh, a protest... <laughs> Um, to the FIA, I'm not. <laughs> no, um, no, I'm happy with that. I'm not last, which is something. And you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some, some of Dan's nonsense and just be like, well, you know, we're the real winners here because uh, we had such a great season. Um, yeah, it hurts, especially since I never got my trophy. Damn COVID. Um, yeah. But yeah, no. I, there's a couple of questions in there. I look back on, I think I was an idiot. Mazapin, for example, but. Hey, I'll come back fighting next time. I might yeah, be second. <laughs> Look, just just be glad you weren't close enough for the Mazabin thing to to be the thing that. Oh <laughs> that God, did it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you could pin it on any one one horrendous error. Best of the human beings didn't quite get it right to the top. John T. A, a, a big step up from Sean in third place. Three hundred and forty points. Congratulations, you're the best human. Yay. Although it turns out my joking impression of Toto was pretty accurate. <laughs> I got massive. Yeah, was... Sorry, you were you were you were robbed by the audience. Uh but you were only robbed by or or beaten, I guess some people say, <laughs> by thirteen <laughs> points for um thousands of minds working together. So that's nothing to be sniffed at. And again, we called Dan the champion when he came in second, so you could be yeah. the champion too. <laughs> so am I the only legitimate champion then? Until the audience came along? Out of the humans? You are the only one who's beaten the audience, yes. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> legitimate champion, illegitimate child. So you, it's a win-win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dad, leave me alone. <laughs> um, well, congratulations, John T. And this does mean that Every single one of you has been the best human at some point, um, which means I probably should come back into it next year, shouldn't I? It's, it's got to be my time to shine. Well, the audience won, so I'll take a photo of the trophy and then I'll sell them all out as NFTs. <laughs> they could all have one. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be funged within the hour. Uh, yeah, well, here we go. I'll get, I made a little graph of the positions. That, that blue line, look, that's the line where you were in the lead, John T., for a bit <laughs> until the end Dan that's yeah, what you're that in third one for so a moment down. what happened there <laughs> you turned up <laughs> bit of a low profile there <laughs> yeah n- not be, my year be, be, I can be, it, it was a new year I can be happy going from last to first eventually yeah well congratulations we're going to do this all again probably quite soon if we're going to do it before the launches start, which is yeah, early didn't... February. Wasn't the first one before launches? I'm sure I can remember. It, it was. Because it, it had stuff to do with liveries and, and things. And I'm looking forward to being disappointed at how people don't take the opportunity to change things up and just put the same livery on the new chassis. <laughs> I'm hoping McLaren do a partnership with Golf and we get that livery full time next year. Please. Yo, and don't forget that Bad Gandalf might be back next year. He's insistent on it. <laughs> Bad Gandalf. Mr. Story. Oh, I was like thinking, the only thing I think was the safety car, because that's the only thing that says you shall not pass. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tangible good one. <laughs> oh, oh, please not, please not. Who, who, who would sign up with Story after all of that? 
But anyone who wants money, I guess. Oh, we're going way off topic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a suitable ending for this is, but I, I, maybe maybe I'm already rolling the credits. Maybe everyone's I'm not seeing... singing again. I am not singing again. <laughs> oh, <you laughs> yeah, we threw you under the bus one. last year. That was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe next year we'll get some wine in you. <laughs> sing. Right. In that case, congratulations, Jonty. We'll see hopefully all of you again for this next year. Maybe we can coax Dan to be a little bit more bold. I think it needs to be a lot more bold. <laughs> get some more points out of him <laughs> but yeah thanks everyone for watching thanks everyone for taking part I'm just gonna fade this out i think maybe until it becomes it's a dirty yeah it's gotta be to, a dirty yeah yeah we'll dirty, turn dirty dirty, yeah. dirty dirty yeah dirty 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 anyway the good i'll do it with the instrumental because if i put the, the <laughs> if i put my own song on my own video um i get copyright striked by me <laughs> and have to deal I with it. I love YouTube so much. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like I have to go automatic? Yeah, I have to go and appeal to myself and then tell myself it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's a great system. 